I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd. I am planting corn this morning and I wanted to walk you through the process. Planting corn from transplants is a little different than tra planting corn from seed. I'm planting this Stoll's Evergreen Heirloom sweet corn that has done really well for me over the past years. The first thing you need to know about corn is it's a heavy feeder. So I am picking out a place to plant it where I previously, last season, grew a cover crop. And you can see it's a little bit messy and that's because I chopped down the cover crop and turned it under and put a layer of compost on top of it. I waited about three weeks, watered it every day, and now it's ready to plant. Now, if you're not uh, planting a cover crop which pulls atmospheric nitrogen out of the sky and feeds it down into these roots that break down over time and feed whatever comes next like a heavy feeder like corn or tomatoes or some melons or squash those are also heavy feeders you want to do your bed prep bed prep is really important and uh, it will show up you know your work that you do ahead of time will show up later as corn prep your bed really well. Uh, we've got a video on bed prep that you'll find in our videos below. The second thing you need to know about growing corn is that it is pollinated via the wind pretty much entirely, sometimes bees, but mostly the wind. And so it's really important to plant corn in a block of at least three by three plants. So nine square feet-ish uh, will do it. If you plant in a long row, or even two long rows, the pollen just blows over the fence and then you get what I call toothless sister cousin corn, which is where <laughs> the ears are underdeveloped and they have like missing teeth, right? So make sure you plant in a block of at least three by three. My space here is four by five and I'm using biointensive methods, uh, grow biointensive, so hexagonal planting in offset rows of 12 inch centers. So in order to calculate how much seed you're going to need, you take your dimensions and figure out how many rows you're going to need for that. And then soak your seeds overnight or at a minimum four hours. I try not to soak more than eight because eight can, you know, beyond that, it can maybe lead to rot, especially if you have clay soil that doesn't drain well. So I've been soaking my seeds since about, well, about eight hours, and I'm gonna drain that off and drill my holes and start planting. Before you drill your holes for planting the seeds, it's a good idea to water the entire bed. Uh, when you drill holes with your finger, um, oftentimes if the soil is dry, those holes will just collapse. So if you want them to stay put, water the whole thing really well, make sure it's nice and saturated before you plant your corn. For this space, which is about 20 square feet, I've calculated that I need about 20 to 25 seeds. My bed has expanded a little bit over time and so I may need more than that. So I started by soaking 25 seeds. If you're uncertain, always soak the lesser amount. You can always soak more and plant, but if you over soak too many seeds, then you have to plant them somewhere. <laughs> you might not have room. So. Uh, be conservative on your on your seed numbers and you'll have more seeds for next time. All right, now I'm going to put on the gloves and drill the holes because I've already watered this area and I'm draining off draining off my water onto this cute little cilantro. Here you go, baby. Corn seeds want to be planted fairly deep because they do push up, kind of like beans and peas, they push up toward the surface. Um, these particular seeds want to be planted one inch deep. There are varieties that want to be planted deeper, but one inch deep is pretty good. That's going to be to your first knuckle on your finger, generally speaking. All right, so to plant, I'm going to start drilling holes. 12 inch centers. And then 12 inches away, in between that previous row. I usually take my gloves off to handle seeds because it's easier to manage. So you're gonna drop one seed in each hole. That's pretty much it.
doop. Don't cover your holes until you've drilled all the holes and put all the seeds in because you'll lose track otherwise. I should say, I will lose track. <laughs> Once you've planted your seeds, covered them up with soil, you want to water them really well with a dilution of kelp emulsion and water. Kelp emulsion always helps things germinate a little bit faster. It's micronutrients. It's really a good thing. But you're not done yet. Uh, I don't know about you, but we have birds who come and really love corn and <clears throat> other critters that really like to come and dig up the seeds. So protection is key. What I like to put down is with U-pins, these are earth staples or U-pins, I uh, use floating row cover. This covers the whole bed, pin it down all the way around, and it is gauzy and thin and the sunlight passes through and water passes through. It allows you to water the seeds and keep them protected until they germinate and get at least, you know, like a couple inches tall. Before, before that, they're still vulnerable to crows, let's say crows. Keep the floating row cover on until they're about two or three inches tall, take it off, and then you're ready to go. Once your corn gets growing, your soil will determine how often it needs to be fed. Remember, corn's a heavy feeder, so you may need, if you have sandy soil, to feed once a month. If you have clay soil and you really amended well and your cover crop that you grew previous season is doing its job, you may not need to fertilize but maybe mid-season. So keep an eye on that. So make sure you check your soil fertility and apply fertilizer as needed. I have another video that picks up where this video leaves off called Propagating and Harvesting Corn. It tells you how to protect the corn once the ears develop and how to harvest it and know when the milk stage is. So check out that video. And of course, for more information, go to gardennerd.com and you'll find information on growing corn in my book, Gardening for Geeks. And please, oh please, check out my new book, Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden. Happy gardening.